Legendary animals were one of those things that were heavily requested for online. Ever since the Red Dead Redemption 2 story where we were able to find legendary animals, we were always questioning why isn't this part of online. This would be a great feature to have. Now they're finally here and they play a massive part within the game. There is a number of different things that you can do with them and that is exactly what we're going to be going through in this video. If you do want to see any more content from me, I am streaming over on Twitch, there'll be a link in the description down below head over to there drop a follow and you'll be notified the next time i go live there is also a discord channel we've been updating the discord a lot and so many people have joined since this update the big highlight of the discord right now is that we do have this legendary animal map which shows you where you can find these animals within free roam doesn't guarantee that they're going to spawn in but now you know the exact locations so if you want to keep up to date with that there is a link in the description to the discord as well getting back into to the video the first thing to talk about is where you can find these legendary animals as already mentioned we have put a map together and this map shows where you can find these legendary animals within free roam and it is incredibly hard to get these to spawn in because you can chuck a number of different pheromones but it doesn't increase the chances of that animal spawning in you need to wait for that animal to already be spawned in and then using these pheromones would attract that animal to you it's just about being in the right place at the right time within free room. But the naturalist role, Harriet, she does have missions which give you a guarantee of a legendary animal. And these will reset every 48 minutes to give you a new batch of legendary animals. Depending what rank you are depends on how many legendary animals you have to choose from. If you're rank 5, you'll only have 1. If you're rank 10, you'll have 2. And if you're rank 15 and above, you will have the option of 3 different animals. But these are still random and they get updated, as said, every 48 minutes. The good thing with this, if you are a high ranked, being rank 15 or above, and you've unlocked all 3, each one of these missions can take you anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. So if you time this correctly, as in the second they've just been reset, and a new batch of animals have been listed. You can go through each one of those animals and by the time you're finished, they'll refresh again, meaning that you can keep on looping this and going round and round and round. But the point of this video is what are your options once you get these legendary animals? That's how you find them, but what can you do with them? The first thing and the most obvious thing with the latest role is you can sedate these animals and you can get a sample of them. This benefits the naturalist role. To sedate an animal, you must shoot it with the sedative. And as these are legendary animals, they take quite a few sedatives. In fact, most animals take a number of sedatives. But once you put enough in that animal, you're able to walk up to it and retrieve a sample. That sample can then be taken over to Harriet, in which you can sell that to her for money. But in addition to that, it also stamps your animal field book. And if you can get every single animal within that category stamped, you can trade that in for money. With the legendary animals right now and the animal field book, you can't complete any of them because some of the animals that it requires aren't actually in Red Dead Online yet. It's part of the drip fed content. And even if they were in online, it's so hard to get these animals to spawn within free roam that it will take some time. But when you do get every animal sampled and you sell those samples to Harriet and then she stamps your book, and you get every single animal done, that is when you can make some very, very good money, pushing all the way up to $700, which is a very good amount. And that's also on top of you being able to get money for selling the samples originally. Depending on what the animal is, you can get anywhere between $20 going up to $90, which is the most expensive I've seen so far. So there can be a lot of money within this role. The next option you have, whether or not you're going into free roam or even the Harriet missions, because you can still do it within in these missions despite it being against what Harriet wants and that is you can kill and skin the animal. Harriet does get very irritated with this and if you keep on doing it and then go back to Harriet she will actually spray you with drugs. Yeah she's she's kind of crazy but it's worth it because you can get some very nice items of clothing if you take it over to the trapper. When first looking at the trapper role if it is your first time and you haven't done anything with legendary animals maybe you're fairly new to the naturalist role as well, it will only show you two different legendary garments that you can get, and that is the Mabel Fox and also the Moonstone Wolf. I don't know why it only shows those two because there's a lot more, and you can unlock these the moment you get into the naturalist role. All you need is a legendary animal pelt, and it'll give you the option to buy that legendary animal garment. 
With this as well, just like sampling animals gives you money, if you sell it to Gus, which you have to do to unlock the trapper, he will also give you money. The downside is if you are doing it for a garment, yes he gives you a decent amount of money, but you do need to spend a couple hundred dollars. It gets very, very expensive, nearly pushing to a grand if you want to buy that specific legendary animal garment. A little issue that I want to point out here, if you find a legendary animal within free roam, and it is a fairly small animal, such as a fox or a beaver, or a wolf or a cougar, where you're able to pick up the animal and chuck it on the back of your horse. Remember to skin it before you sell anything. The reason for this is because the garments require you to have the animal skin, the animal pelt. If you sell the animal carcass, Gus will not break it down into a pelt. It actually counts as nothing, which means you'll have to find that legendary animal again for you to have the materials to make that garment. It is incredibly irritating and I hope Rockstar changed this. Similar to the Trapper, you have the Butcher. You can sell some legendary animal parts to the Butcher, but these are different animal parts. We're talking about animal claws, animal teeth, and not actually the pelt itself. But I also don't see why you would want to do this. Because the Butcher does give you money for these items, but the Trapper will give you the exact same amount of money for every single item within the game. But the Trapper also has the added bonus that it logs what you've sold to him, so you can use these in the future to craft unique items. At the minute, right now, the Trapper does not require legendary animal parts for teeth or animal claws or anything like that. But in the future, he might. And you can start stacking up now, so the point of when that does come, that item that does get added to the store, where you need those specific items, you can buy into it straight away. So a butcher is an option, but I just don't see why you would want to do that. And then finally, something that could be a huge money maker, you can take these legendary animals to your camp to donate to cribs to benefit the trader role. And they give you a lot of materials. And this isn't just for the full animal. I can't imagine what it would be for a full animal. But right now, what I've been doing is going into the Harriet missions, and at the end of those missions, I decide to kill the animal. As I've already gone through these missions a number of times, I've managed to get a sample of each and every one of those animals, and I've also managed to get the skin and sell that to the trapper to get the garment for each and every one of these animals, I decided I'm gonna use them for other things. But it does mean because the mission forces you to do it, I've killed it and then skinned it. I haven't kept the full carcass. You can't. But I'm donating pelts like the legendary cross fox pelt, and that is given 55.63 materials to the camp. Before that, the best we were getting was a cougar, which would give you around about 15 materials. And you can see how this is just scaling up massively. And that's also not including that you could go through these Harriet missions and you could kill the other animals that you come across. And that can give you even more animal parts. No word of a lie, I guarantee that you can go through a Harriet mission, spend maybe like 10, 15 minutes minutes killing animals and then another five minutes trying to do the mission itself and you will fully resupply your trader or you can just do two legendary animal harriet missions and then you're done you're sorted you've got the animal parts required you filled the trader role with materials you just need to wait for cribs to craft them now we're at the point where if you keep on going into these legendary animal missions from harriet you go in there you kill the animal you skin it you come out you chuck it in your wagon your wagon is gonna save that and you can keep on doing that keep on looping it and you're gonna be sorted for life with materials for the trader there's a lot of different options that you have now with legendary animals going into different roles as as well as just some things on the side that can make you some money or unlock some different items of clothing. How I make my decisions on what I do is first off, I'm looking for a garment. I want those items for my character. If I've already killed that animal and I've already got that garment before because I've sold it to the trapper before, then the next thing I'm gonna do is look to get in a sample because I can complete the sample and then I can also sell that and I can get that stamped and if I complete a full category, then I'm able to make quite a bit of money. If I've already sold a sample of that animal and I've already got it stamped, there's no point in me doing it again. So it's at that point when I decide that I'm going to kill the animal and I'm actually going to store that in my hunting wagon. And I'm going to take that hunting wagon all the way over to my camp to donate it to Cribs. Even if the camp's full, I can still keep it within the hunting wagon and I can save it. At no point will I ever sell it to the butcher. It is not worth it. But anyway, that is everything you can do with Legendary animals. If you do want to see me play this game live and maybe even do some of the stuff that I talked about, 
like stocking up the hunting wagon with legendary animals, then there is a link in the description to my Twitch streams. Head over to there, drop a follow, and you'll be notified the next time I go live. If you want to see the latest updated version of the legendary animal map, there is a link to Discord in the description down below. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going. So see ya.